warning. This podcast contains content that may be alarming, disturbing, or shocking to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. According to National Crime Information Center, over 600,000 Americans get reported missing every year. Over 85,000 stay that way. The FBI says there's over 25 to 50 active serial killers in America at any time. Yes, we truly do live in a land of monsters. These are some of their stories. Welcome to Among Monsters, a true crime podcast brought to you by Jeremy Hansen. Hello and welcome to Among Monsters, true crime podcast. Today, I want to talk about Tommy Lynn Sells, a lesser known serial killer of America that did the most wicked, vile, disgusting, evil things. Most people don't know about him, but when you do find out about what he did and where he was at, you question your safety. You question how safe are we really, our children, our family members. Who was Tommy Lynn Sells? Tommy Lynn Sells was a serial killer who claimed responsibility for over 70 murders across the United States, earning him the nickname the Coast to Coast Killer. Tommy Lynn Sells has pled guilty to just two murders, but that was enough to land him on Texas death row. He was executed in 2014. What led to that? On December 31st, 1999, 10-year-old Crystal Searles was staying at the house of a friend, Kayleen Katie Harris. She was 13. When a man entered the bedroom where the girls were sleeping, the man grabbed Katie and slashed her throat, killing her. He then slashed Crystal's throat and she dropped to the floor and pretended to be dead. She stayed still so she could escape and get help from a neighbor, thinking that everyone in the house that she had the slumber party at was dead. Crystal provided enough detail for a forensic artist to create a sketch that eventually led to the arrest of Tommy Lynn Sells. It turns out that Tommy Lynn Sells knew Terry Harris, Katie's adopted father, and she was the intended victim that night. Tommy Lynn Sells was arrested days later on January 2nd, 2000 at the trailer home where he lived with his wife and her four children. He did not resist arrest. He didn't even ask why he was being arrested. Sells later confessed to killing Katie and attacking Crystal, but that was just the tip of the iceberg. During the following months, Tommy Lynn Sells admitted to killing multiple men, women, and children in several states across the country. So what did Crystal Searles run into? Well, according to psychologists, his pathology report reads that he's a serial killer, a serial rapist, a pedophile, a hebophile, an abductor, a robber, a necrophiliac, and the worst of all, he's a family annihilator. So what does this mean? How does one get to this point? How did Tommy Lynn Sells decide that he was going to be this killer, this murderer. Well, Tommy Lynn Sells was born on June 28, 1964 in Oakland, California. He had a twin sister named Tammy Jean. They were two of five children in his family, having been brought into the world by Nina Sells. William Sells was his father, and at the time, he was conceived They were conspiring to rip off insurance, if that gives you any idea. A few months after he was born, Sells and his sister contracted meningitis. He survived, and his twin sister Tammy died. Thereafter, he was sent to live with his aunt, his aunt in Missouri. Two years later, Nina brought him back home when she learned that his aunt wanted to adopt him because his mother could not support them. When Sells turned seven years old, he began drinking. At eight, he was molested by a man with Nina's consent named Wills Clark. 
Before that man, another man had taken a shine to him from another town, and his mother pushed him off on him, and he was also molested. At 10, he began abusing drugs. At 7 years old, he quit going to school. At 13 years old, Tommy Lincells climbed naked into his grandmother's bed while she slept. This incident caused him to be banned from their house, and not long afterwards, his mother and siblings just left town, abandoning Tommy Lincells. A few days after his mother left, he assaulted a female by striking her with a pistol in a fit of rage at the age of 14 years old. He then became a permanent drifter and lived the life of a serial killer. How bad can he be? How many places was he? Well, on November 17th and 18th of 1983, he was hitchhiking close to Ena, Illinois. He was picked up by Keith Dardine, who offered to bring him back home for dinner. When they got into the Dardine residence, Tommy Lynn Sells pulled out a gun and shot him twice in the head. He then cut off Keith's penis before killing him with one more shot to the head. Keith's son, Peter, was bludgeoned to death with a baseball bat. Tommy Lynn Sells then attacked Elaine, Keith's pregnant wife. The beating was so severe that she went into labor and gave birth to their daughter while being raped. They eventually wanted to name her Casey. He fatally bludgeoned Casey before raping her mother. Tommy Lynn Sells then proceeded to mutilate Elaine's breast before beating her to death and sexually assaulting her corpse with a baseball bat that he used to murder her children and left it sticking out of her vagina. How bad can one person be? Where did he come from? Well, like I said, Tommy Lynn Sells and his twin sister Tammy Jean were born in Oakland, California on June 28, 1964. His mother, Nina Sells, was a single mother not married to William Sells. The family moved to St. Louis, Missouri, and at 18 months old, both twins contracted spinal meningitis, which killed Tammy Jean, but Tommy survived. Soon after his recuperation, Sells was sent to live with his aunt, Bonnie Walpole, in Holcomb, Missouri. He stayed there until the age of five. When he returned to live with his mother, he had discovered that Walpole was interested in adopting him, and she quickly took them away. Throughout his early childhood years, Sells was mostly left to fend for himself for food and shelter and rarely attended school by the age of seven and was drinking alcohol heavily. Around this time, Tommy Lynn Sells began hanging out with a man from a nearby town. The man showed him a lot of attention in the form of gifts and frequent outings. Sells spent the night at the man's house repeatedly. Later, this man was found guilty of child molestation of other children, which came as no surprise to Sells, who had been one of his victims. From ages 10 to 13, Sells showed a knack for staying in trouble. By 10, he had stopped attending school, preferring to smoke pot and drink alcohol. When he was 13, he climbed into his grandmother's bed, and that was the last straw for the family. Within days, the family left and left Tommy alone, leaving not as much as a forwarding address. Filled with rage after being abandoned, the teenage cells attacked his first female victim at 14 years old while pistol-whipping her until she was unconscious. With no one home and no family, cells began drifting from town to town, picking up odd jobs and stealing what he needed. Sells later claimed he committed the first murder at age 16 while breaking into a home and killing a man who was performing oral sex on a young boy. There was never any proof to back up his claim, but many men have disappeared and been killed and they haven't found who the killer was. Sells also claimed to have shot and killed a man named John Cade Sr. in July 1979 after Cade caught him burglarizing his home. In May of 1981, Tommy Lynn Sells went to Little Rock, Arkansas and moved back in with his estranged family. The reunion, however, was short-lived as Nina Sells, his mother, told him to leave after he attempted to jump in the shower and have sex with her. 
back on the streets, Tommy Lynn Sells returned to what he knew best, robbing, killing, working as a carnival roustabout, and hopping trains between cities. He later confessed to killing two people in Arkansas before heading to St. Louis in 1983. Only one of the murders, that of Hal Akins, has ever been confirmed. In May 1984, Sills was convicted of car theft and given a two-year prison sentence. He was released the following February, but failed to follow the terms of his probation. While in Missouri, Tommy Lynn Sells started working at Country Fair in Forsyth, Missouri, where he met Ina Court, 35 years old, and her son. Tommy Lynn Sells later admitted to killing both of them. According to Sells, Court invited him back to her house. But when he caught her going through his knapsack, he beat her to death with a baseball bat. He then did the same to the only witness of the crime, four-year-old Rory. Their bodies were found three days later. Tommy Lynn Sells would go on to say that he only met his father one time, William Sells. And during that time, his father said, Dead men tell no tales. By September 1984, Sells was back in jail for drunk driving after crashing his car. He stayed in jail until May 16, 1986. Back in St. Louis, Sells claimed that he shot a stranger in self-defense. He then headed to Arkansas Pass, Texas, where he was hospitalized for an overdose of heroin. Once out of the hospital, he stole a car and headed to Fremont, California. While in Fremont, investigators believe he was responsible for the death of Jennifer Dewey, 20 years old, who was shot in the head. They also believe he murdered Michelle Xavier, 19, who was found with her throat cut. In October of 1987, Tommy Lynn Sells was living in Winnemucca, Nevada, with 20-year-old Stephanie Stroh. Tommy Lynn Sells confessed to drugging Stroh with LSD and then strangling her and disposing of her body by weighing her feet down with concrete and putting her into a hot spring in the desert. The crime has never been confirmed. Tommy Lynn Sells said he left Winnemucca on November 3rd and headed east. In October 1987, he confessed to murdering Suzanne Korch, 27, of Amherst, New York. Keith Dardeen, the next known victim, who tried to befriend Sells, said he spotted Sells hitchhiking in Ena, Illinois, and offered him a hot meal at his home. In return, Tommy Lynn Sells shot Dardeen, then mutilated his penis. Next, he murdered Dardeen's three-year-old son, Pete, by bludgeoning him with a baseball bat and then turned his rage on Dardeen's pregnant wife, Elaine, who he raped. The attack caused Elaine to go into labor, and she gave birth to her daughter. Neither the mother nor the daughter survived. Sells beat both of them to death with a bat. In 2002... Crime writer Diana Fanning began corresponding with Terry Lynn Sells as he awaited execution in Texas. In one of his letters to Fanning, Tommy Lynn Sells confessed to the murder of 10-year-old Joel Kirkpatrick. Joel's mother, Julie Ray Harper, had been found guilty of his murder and was in prison. Tommy Lynn Sells told Fanning in a later interview that Harper had been rude to him at a convenience store. So to get back at him, he followed her home and murdered the boy. The confession, along with Fanning's testimony at a prison review board and help from the Innocence Project, resulted in a new trial for Harper that ended in acquittal in 2006. For 20 years, Tommy Lynn Sells was a transient serial killer who managed to stay under the radar as he roamed the country, killing and raping victims of all ages. During his confection, he took the nickname Coast to Coast, when describing the murders he had committed one month in California and the next month in Texas. Based on Tommy Lynn Sell's confessions and following his own timetable, this can be pieced together. In December of 1988, Tucson, Arizona, he kills Ken Lawton over a bad drug deal. In December to January of 1988, Salt Lake City, Utah, murders an unknown woman and her three-year-old son, disposing of their bodies in the Snake River in Idaho. January 1988, Ina, Illinois, after murdering the Dardeen family, is arrested for stealing a car. He takes off before his scheduled court appearance. 
January 1988, Lawrence, Massachusetts. He rapes and murders Melissa Trembley, age 11. January 27th, 1989, Truckee, California. Kills an unnamed prostitute and disposes her body. And an unidentified woman's body was found at the location that he gave police. April 1989, Roseburg, Oregon. Kills an unnamed woman in her 20s. May 9th, 1989, Roseburg. Kills a female hitchhiker. May 9th, 1989, Roseburg, Oregon. Is arrested for stealing from his employer and spends 15 days in jail. The same day he killed the hitchhiker. August 16th, 1989, North Little Rock, Arkansas. Is arrested on theft charges. October 18th, 1989, Oakland, California, is charged with public drunkenness and put into detox. November 1989, Carson City, Nevada, he is charged with public drunkenness. December 1989, Phoenix, Arizona, is hospitalized for a heroin overdose. January 7th, 1990, Salt Lake City, Utah, is arrested on charges of cocaine possession, but released after police determined that he was not in possession of the drugs. January 12th, 1990, Rowlands, Rye, Wyoming, is arrested and sent to prison for auto theft, was released in January 1991. December 1991, Mariana, Florida, kills Teresa Hall, 28, and her five-year-old daughter. March to April of 1992, Charleston, South Carolina, is arrested for public drunkenness. May 13, 1992, Charleston, West Virginia, is in prison for raping, beating, and stabbing a 20-year-old woman who survived the attack, sentenced to two 10-year prison terms, and was released in May of 1997. October 13, 1997, Lawrenceville, Illinois, attacks Julie Ray Harper and stabs 10-year-old Joel Kirkpatrick to death. October 1997, Springfield, Missouri, kidnaps, rapes, and strangles to death 13-year-old Stephanie Mahaney. October 1998, Del Rio, Texas, marries a woman with three children. The couple is separated for two weeks in February 1999 and again in late March. March 30th, 1999, Del Rio, Rapes and murders Debbie Harris, 28 years old, and Ambria Harris, 8 years old. April 18, 1999, San Antonio, Texas. Rapes and strangles Mary Perez, age 9. May 13, 1999, Lexington, Kentucky. Rapes and murders Haley McHone, 13, and then sells her bicycle for $20. Mid-May of June 24, 2000. Mid-May through June 24th of 1999, he was in Madison, Wisconsin, and was jailed for drunk and disorderly conduct. July 3rd, 1999, Kingfisher, Oklahoma, shoots and kills Bobby Lynn Wolford, 14 years old. December 31st, 1999, Del Rio, Texas, murders Katie Harris, 13, and attempts to murder Crystal Searles, and that is his final murder. But ladies and gentlemen, that is just what he wrote. He confessed to over 70 murders. Now, known victims confirmed by the police. July 5th, 1979, Port Gibson, Mississippi. John Cade, 39 years old, shot with a 32 caliber revolver. Unspecified date in 1982, Little Rock, Arkansas. Hal Akins, shot but survived. July 31st, 1983, St. Louis, Missouri, Colleen and Tiffany Gill, both bludgeoned to death. Colleen Gill, 33, Tiffany Gill, four years old. July 26th, 1985, Springfield, Missouri, Ina and Rory Court. Ina Court, 28 years old, Rory Court, four years old. 1987, May 1st, Lockport, New York, Susan Korch, 27. Her body was found on September 5th, 1995. October 15th, 1987, Lovelock, Nevada, Stephanie Stroh, 20, strangled. Her body has never been found. 1987, November 17th to 18th, Ina, Illinois, the Dardeen family, Keith Dardeen, 29, Peter Dardeen, 3 years old, Casey Dardeen, the baby that was born while being raped, and Elaine Dardeen, 30. 1988, 
September 11th, Salem, New Hampshire, Melissa Trembley, 11 years old, raped and stabbed and run over by a train post-mortem. Her body was found the next day. December 18th, Tucson, Arizona, Kent Lauren, 51, stabbed. Her body was found two days later. December 9th, 1991, Mariana, Florida, Teresa and Tiffany Hall, both bludgeoned with a wooden table leg. Teresa Hall, 25, Tiffany Hall, 5. May 13th, 1992, Charleston, West Virginia, Fabian Witherspoon, 20 years old, raped, stabbed 18 times, and bludgeoned with a piano stool. But she survived. 1997, October 13th, Lawrenceville, Illinois, Joel Kirkpatrick and Julie Ray Harper. Joel Kirkpatrick was 10 years old, stabbed to death. Julie Ray Harper was assaulted only and survived. October 15th, Springfield, Missouri of 1997. Stephanie Mahaney, 13, abducted, drugged, raped, and strangled. Her body was found on November 18th. In 1999, April 4th, Gibson, Tennessee, Deborah Harris and Ambria Halliburton. Deborah Harris, 31, Ambria Halliburton, 8 years old. Stabbed three times in the neck. April 18th, San Antonio, Texas, Mary Perez abducted, raped, strangled with her T-shirt, and her body was found 10 days later. May 13th, Lexington, Kentucky, Haley McCone, 13, abducted, raped, and strangled with her T-shirt, covered her body with debris post-mortem. Her body was found 10 days later. Unspecified day in May, Madison, Wisconsin, attacking an inmate, assaulted only. July 5th, Kingfisher, Oklahoma, Bobby Lynn Wolford, 14, forced to perform oral sex and sodomized, then shot in the head, took two of her earrings to sell. December 31st, Del Rio, Texas, Kayleen Harris and Crystal Searles. Kayleen Harris, 13, sexually assaulted, stabbed 16 times and slashed her throat. Crystal Searles slashed her throat and she survived. Now, these are possible, according to the police. Unspecified date, unspecified location, unnamed man. Shot when cells caught him sexually abusing a young boy. 1980, Los Angeles, California, unnamed man, stabbed with an ice pick. Oakland, California, unnamed man, assaulted. Cells was unsure if the man died. 1982, Little Rock, Arkansas, Joanne Tate and her daughters. Joanne Tate was 35, sexually assaulted with a broomstick and stabbed with a knife. Melissa Davis, 7, stabbed with a knife but survived. And Renee Tate, 4 years old, stabbed with a knife but survived. Unspecified date, unnamed woman, abducted, raped, tortured, and killed. Her body was never found. February 28, 1983, St. Louis, Missouri, unidentified girl, 8 to 10 years old, raped and killed, Her head was never found, but her torso was. Unspecified date in 1988, Gooding County, Idaho. Unnamed woman and her son murdered. Bodies never found. 1989, January 27th, Truckee, California. Unidentified woman strangled to death. January 30, San Francisco, California. Eileen Meiselhoff, 13, raped and strangled to death. May, Roseburg, Oregon. Unnamed woman, raped and killed. They never found her identity. May 9th, Roseburg, Oregon. Unnamed woman, again, strangled and dumped. Unspecified date in 1997, Twin Falls, Idaho. Unnamed woman, raped and killed, cut up with an axe and buried post-mortem. April 15th, 1998, San Antonio, Texas. Thomas Bros, 40 years old, shot twice in the head. Now, Sells had claimed to have murdered many other people. As a matter of fact, he claimed to murder 72 people. We'll never, ever know. On September 18, 2000, Tommy Lynn Sells pleaded guilty and was convicted of capital murder of Katie Harris and the attempted murder of Crystal Searles. He was sentenced to death. On September 17, 2003, Tommy Lynn Sells was indicted but never tried for the 1997 Greene County, Missouri murder of Stephanie Mahaney. That same year, Sells pleaded guilty to strangling to death nine-year-old Mary B. Perez of San Antonio, for which he received a life sentence. 
Sells was executed by lethal injection in the Allen B. Polinsky unit near West Livingston, Texas, on April 3rd, 2014 at 627 p.m. Central. He declined to make a final statement. I don't know about you, but people like this scare me. We don't know where they're at. This man, the coast-to-coast killer, Tommy Lynn Sells, killed in New York, Florida, Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, Texas, Utah, Idaho, Washington, California, and more. We will never know the true devastation of somebody like Tommy Lynn Sells. But we can guarantee one thing. If you start looking at serial killers, including Tommy Lynn Sells, and you see the trouble that they had when they were children, you see that the environment that they grow up in and the lack of love that they receive from their parents play a big role in what they do later in life. He had no modus operandi. He was a lust and thrill killer. We know that his victims are between 23 and 70 with three failed attempts at murder. He committed his crimes from July 5th, 1979 through December 31st, 1999. And he is dead. I put together a part two for this show on Tommy Lynn Sells where it actually has the little girl Searles on there talking about how she put, as a 10-year-old, put away one of the most prolific serial killers that America doesn't know about. Thank you very much, and thanks for listening to Among Monsters. (laughs) 